Good afternoon, Stanford. We continue to talk about dialogue tactics, this time moving on to a discussion on the dreaded information dump. Uh, before we dive into the specifics of what actually entails an information dump, I want to put a quick asterisk here just to say that the information dump is going to be an inevitable byproduct of the rough draft. As we're kind of stumbling through this world, familiarizing ourselves not only with the externalities of the world, but also kind of with the internal mechanisms of what are going to make our main characters tick, we're going to have to do some overriding. We're going to let our subtext poke its head up into the literal text. Uh, it's unavoidable because we're still figuring out uh, the way that we're going to tell our stories um, plight the way that we're going to render our characters' internal and emotional conflict, as well as their kind of physical or external conflict. The only way that we can really truly know these things, <coughs> excuse me, is to allow ourselves the latitude to do some overriding. So definitely give yourself a free pass on one hand to say, I'm overriding, uh, I'm information dumping, but that's okay because this is just a rough draft and I'm going to catch all this stuff in revision. Uh, it's a nice way to kind of empower yourselves, too. Suddenly you're not saying, oh man, I'm information dumping, I know I'm not supposed to do this. You say, I know I'm not going to be doing this in the final draft because I'm going to catch all this stuff in revision. But for now, since I'm still familiarizing myself in the world, it's totally A-OK -okay to allow some of this stuff to go on. While it might go on, it's also still uh, possible for you to be honing the mechanism to catch this stuff. Um, and what we really want to be catching is the information dump itself. And an information dump is when a reader is being talked to from the author rather than a reader simply observing the characters in scene. So let me go about describing that in a little bit more thorough fashion. Dialogue construction at its best is going to have uh, character A talking to character B. Uh, of course, in this example, there would only be two characters in the scene. You can have as many people on the stage as you'd like, but we'll just keep with two characters for now. So dialogue at its best is going to be character A is conversing with character B. Character B is talking to character A. And the reader just happens to be a fly on the wall. He or she is just privy to the specifics of the discussion, the organic discussion, that character A and character B are having. An information dump would be when <clears throat> a writer tries to cheat and suddenly we're not having a situation where character A is talking to character B, but we have a situation where the author is talking directly to the reader. We're trying to like, cram some information there in a way that's inauthentic or inorganic to the scene itself. Let me pause there just to say that <clears throat> I recognize that this is all a sleight of hand. It's always us, the author, talking directly to the reader. Uh, but sometimes we do this in a really fluid and cohesive way, which would be character A talking to character B, and the reader just happens to be the fly on the wall. And sometimes we do this in a clunky, stumbling way, which would be the reader uh, getting information directly from the author. And it's our job in the revision process to smooth these seams over, uh, to make sure that it always seems as though the characters are organically talking amongst themselves. So I used this example in the dialogue handout this week, and let's just go over it really quickly. Um, so this would be an example of what an information dump actually is. We have a husband, we have a wife, they've been married for 20 years, and this would be the dialogue interchange. The husband, do you remember our daughter? The wife, you mean the one who drowned in the lake last summer? Husband, yeah, Debbie. She was left-handed, wife, and her eyes were green, husband, and she was allergic to milk. You know, obviously I'm being a little bit hyperbolic and a little bit sarcastic with this example, but we do this all the time in our prose. We need the reader to know that the husband and the wife have a daughter who died last summer. Uh, but they, since they know this information, would never talk about it in this way. The husband would never walk into the kitchen and say to his wife of 20 years, do you remember our dead daughter, Debbie? Again, another asterisk, because if Samuel Beckett 
put this scene together, he might very well have characters do something like this, and it could probably totally work. But for our purposes right now, let's pretend that we're just talking about realist modes of storytelling. The question then becomes, if we catch ourselves doing an information dump where we have the husband walking on stage uh, and kind of acting like a sock puppet for the writer to convey information to the reader, how do we catch this stuff? How do we find ways to give it authentically to our reader? And this is where triggers can be something really useful. A trigger would be some mechanism that exists in the present that can act as a uh, portal or a way for us to kind of authentically access the past in a way that's going to seem completely valid given the space-time or the world structure that you've put together in the story. So again, come start to think about the props that would be on the stage, uh, the things around them, uh, maybe dates, maybe it happens to be the anniversary of when Debbie passed away, uh, maybe they happen to see a picture of Debbie, maybe they're one of them is going swimming, and because they're going to be in water, this remind, the water in the pool reminds them of the water in the lake from which Debbie drowned. There would be lots of ways to do this, but you start to see some causality, some sort of cause and effect for why a character in the present is referencing this, this thing from his or her past. So your goal this week as you write forward is to A, start to catch yourself or start to hone that mechanism for when you are information dumping, when you as the writer are talking straight to your reader. And then the second part of that is to start to think about ways where you can get around it, ways that you can much more cohesively and much more smoothly sculpt dialogue that seems authentic uh, to the characters that are in your scene themselves. How can you create triggers? How can you find a way to create a smooth relationship between the past and the present? So keep those things in mind as you're writing ahead this week. Thank you.